Many of my patients come to clinic and they say, doc, could you check my testosterone level? Because if, if my testosterone level is low, it's probably going to have an impact on how things are happening in the bedroom. Well, if that's a question you've asked yourself or you want to ask your doctor, you've come to the right video. Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton. And as you know, I'm on a mission to help you achieve metabolic health. In today's video, I want to answer those questions you have about your testosterone level. We'll call it low T and, and help you understand what you need to think about. So when you're talking to your doctor, you'll know what questions to ask. But the first thing you need to understand is that there are some symptoms that are very common in people who suffer from low T. And as you can see, your hair can start to get a little thinner or fall out. You can lose a little muscle mass, gain weight. Uh, of course, your sex drive can go down. You can even have an impact on your sleep and have some of these other symptoms that you see, including increased body fat and reduced sperm production. So if you're having any of these symptoms, uh, you want to think about the potential of checking your testosterone level. Uh, but, you know, diagnosing a low T uh, is really important if you have symptoms or if you simply just are curious and it's really important to get that testosterone level done early in the morning. The key is to make sure you do it before 10 a.m. Because if you do it later, it's not going to be very accurate. So you get that level done. And if you find that level is low, then your doctor will need to repeat the testosterone level just to check it again. But when he does that, he or she does that, you want to think about also getting an FSH or an LH level. And it's really important because as a doctor, my job is to distinguish, is it uh, an issue with the testes itself, which is called primary hypogonadism, or is it an issue with the pituitary or in the brain? And that's secondary hypogonadism. Now, if you notice that if your FSH or LH are elevated, that's more likely to be in the gonads. And if it's low, it's likely to be from the brain. And, and at the end of the day, if I find that that level is actually low for FSH and LH, then I may be inclined to do an imaging study, like an MRI of your pituitary. But I also may check some of the other hormones that are commonly uh, se you know, secreted from the pituitary, like the TSH, uh, T4 prolactin levels, etc. So some additional things that need to happen if you find that your testosterone level is low. Now, what happens if we find that you have, uh, you know, primary hypogonadism? There are other things that may cause it. As you can see, there's autoimmune conditions that can do it, some genetic factors, and of course, infections, liver or kidney disease, even surgery or trauma that damage to pituitary can lead to this. Now, you also have secondary hypogonadism. And in that setting, it could be from the things listed, ane anorexia nervosa, uh, certain medications like steroids, of course, your genetics, something called Kalman syndrome. And of course, when you stop steroids, that can also increase your risk and the other things listed like infection. So, so again, the, the real important thing is if you have a low testosterone level, don't just start begging for testosterone uh, treatment. Focus on what the root cause is. I'm all about what the root cause uh, is. And if we get to the root cause, we may be able to do something about it. Now, if it's not the testicles and it's not the pituitary, it could be due to something called androgen resistance. And that can be due to a, a deficiency in an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Now, when you're deficient in that, you won't be able to uh, convert the testosterone to the active form, which is DHT. So, so again, if things are not looking clear, your doctor may want to look into this as a possibility. And going further downstream uh, is possible that you have an issue at the androgen receptor itself. And if that's defective, as you can see illustrated to the left here, that can also be the cause of a low testosterone level. So now nobody wants to have the consequences of low T because, again, it can affect your sex drive. Uh, it can affect your desire to have sex. It can also uh, increase your risk for uh, having uh, bone density issues things like osteopenia or osteoporosis. So, so it's really important that we understand if we have normal 
uh, testosterone levels or not. What's interesting, though, is that we really don't want to treat this unless the levels are really low. And I'm thinking literally levels as low as 50 or 20. Uh, And a lot of times patients come to me when their levels are around 250, 350, and it's considered borderline or low. But it's rare that the symptoms of fatigue and decreased sex drive are related to your testosterone level when they're at that level. So if it's really low, then you want to start thinking about the potential for using uh, testosterone shots, which you see illustrated here. We have testosterone gels that we can prescribe, and we also have the potential to get a patch. And with the patch, you can also absorb the testosterone and treat it that way as well. So now for those needing treatment for fertility, We need to stimulate something called spermatogenesis to make that happen. And as you can see here, one of the treatments is uh, HCG. And and with that type of treatment, you can stimulate, uh, and there are others, you can stimulate spermatogenesis, which will then help those who are having issues with fertility. Now, now, of of course, everybody wants to be treated if they think their testosterone is low, but it's really important that you understand there are times when you really don't want to take testosterone. One is if you have breast cancer in your history, and guess what? Guys can get breast cancer. So if that's part of your history, it's an absolute contraindication. Uh, Polycythemia with an elevated hematocrit, that's another example. And we always track the uh, hematocrit when you get like a CBC. So whenever you get blood, that's being checked. So we're always aware of that. Of course, prostate cancer is not a good idea because uh, testosterone will probably increase the risk of that coming back. And then if your prostate PSA, uh, prostate specific antigen is elevated, that's another scenario where you want to be cautious. Maybe if you have a, a prostate nodule, you want to be cautious. So these are things that we consider it absolute. And then you also have relative contraindications. So again, if your baseline hematocrit is greater than 50%, Uh, If you desire fertility, you want to be cautious because uh, testosterone therapy, believe it or not, can suppress spermatogenesis. And then, of course, if you have lower urinary tract symptoms, uncontrolled congestive heart failure or sleep apnea that's not controlled, those are scenarios where you may not want to use testosterone. So, So as a wellness doctor, I'm always curious, you know, what's the best way to treat this condition. And I, I, I lean towards natural treatments because you don't have to worry about the potential side effects of any of these treatments. So um, the good news is the diet that I tend to encourage people to do is keto. And as you can uh, imagine, uh, keto is a higher fat diet, right? And if you look at this pyramid, you see 70 to 80% of the food you're eating is going to be fat. Now, why is that important? Well, what we found is that fat and cholesterol are needed to make testosterone. In fact, what you find in people who are on a low-fat diet, they tend to have issues with a low testosterone level. And as you can see, and it's so funny when you think about it, we've been told for years, reduce saturated fat in your diet, reduce the cholesterol in your diet. Well, if you do that, you will not be able to make testosterone. So how ironic is that? And uh, the next thing that's really helpful about a keto diet is that it's adequate protein, adequate animal protein in that diet as well. And this uh, article in uh, Nutrients was uh, published and it shared that it showed the connection between adequate protein in your diet and the ability to maintain uh, your testosterone level. They found that people who had low protein actually had uh, issues with maintaining their um, testosterone, which is interesting. So, so people on a low-fat diet, they, they tend to not eat enough animal protein. And of course, they are not eating uh, sufficient animal fat. So you can imagine they're going to struggle. I have a link to this uh, study in the notes. It is observational, which you know is more possible association, possible correlation, but it is a beginning to us understanding the connection. Now, what's really cool about carnivore, which is a dietary pattern I follow, is that it's, of course, high in fat and protein, but it's even better at eliminating uh, those grains and those sugars. And, And when you do that, you really are doing yourself a favor because you don't get insulin resistance. And guess what? People who have insulin resistance tend to have low T. So another reason to be a fan of keto or carnivore. And 
here we go with alcohol. Um, we try not to blame it on the alcohol, as Jamie Foxx would say, but at the end of the day, uh, when you consume too much alcohol, it will reduce your testosterone levels because alcohol can impair the function of the testicular Sertoli cells, which play a critical role in sperm maturation, et cetera. So don't overconsume alcohol. Periodic consumption is probably okay. And of course, there's always supplements. You've probably seen things like this being advertised, but the ones I wanted to bring to your attention are zinc, uh, vitamin D, and when you do vitamin D, always do a D3K2 version, ashwagandha, and something called fenugreek seed. Those are some supplements that may be helpful for those who are trying to get their testosterone level up. And finally, uh, the more obvious thing is that if you build muscle, rather you're doing uh, weights or you're doing high intensity interval training, you're going to do yourself a big favor to increase your testosterone levels. So I always tell my patients, we want to age like fine wine. So if you want to make sure that you're aging well and not getting older with time, in fact, you may actually be able to reverse the clock a little bit if you uh, eat a, a proper human diet like keto or carnivore. You exercise, maybe take the right supplements, but at the end of the day, if you do the right things, I think you'll do really well. So I really hope this video gave you foundational information about how to approach this problem. The big message is that if your testosterone level is low, repeat it, get that FSH and LH, find out if it's coming from the testicles or gonads or from your pituitary, and then make decisions with your doctor and or advanced practice clinician to know what next steps are. So I really appreciate you guys for coming to the Metabolic Health Docs YouTube channel. And until the next video, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.